At the Farnborough Air Show in 1949, barely four years after the war ended, Britain presented an impressive array of jet aircraft. Some were purely military, others experimental, and there were even some airliners converted from piston engines to the new jet technology. Perhaps the best crowd pleaser was the advanced de Havilland Comet turbojet airliner. Elsewhere in England, other types of jet airliners were being developed, but these were somewhat different. This is the Vickers Viscount airliner. When it first came into service in the early 50s, it quickly became a success. One of the main reasons for the Viscount's ever-expanding order book was the aircraft's Rolls-Royce Dart turboprop engines. However, the Viscount wasn't the only contender nor was the Dart the only turboprop engine available at the time. Slightly smaller than the Viscount and with different turboprop engines, the Armstrong Whitworth AW55 Apollo was no less pleasing to the eye, and in tandem with the Vickers aircraft, represented a giant step forward in airline design. The target market for both aircraft was the short to medium routes of the emerging post-war airline industry. With government backing British industry, they had something special to offer with the revolutionary turboprop engines. The concept of a conventional jet having its exhaust thrust converted into turning power for traditional propeller blades was brand new and it made for extremely economical and very smooth running. There were two early examples, the Rolls-Royce Dart and the competitive Armstrong Sidley Mamba. The Apollo's designers favored the Mamba, whereas Vickers chose the Dart. Construction of the Apollo started in Armstrong Whitworth's factory at Baggington Airport in 1948. Baggington had been bombed during the German Blitz on Coventry. It was used as an RAF fighter base during the war years, but now it would be used as part of Britain's critical export drive to repay the war debt. There were grounds for optimism as the country refocused its industry. Only three years earlier, manufacturers had produced Spitfires and Lancasters by the thousands, and for a time, most of the skilled aircraft builders were still on hand. One of the more notable features of the Apollo's Mamba engines was their narrow diameter. Slender and aerodynamic, they complemented the aircraft's aesthetics. However, the smaller engine housings that accompanied the Mamba did not provide for an area to store the landing gear in flight. This meant that the main wheels had to retract into the fuselage, consuming valuable space. However, the Mamba still showed great promise. Apart from anything else, it had already powered a trainer, the Athena, which was actually the first production aircraft to employ a turboprop engine. Also, early tests suggested good performance. In 1948, a 500-hour test run confirmed the engine's durability. After this, Armstrong and Whitworth were sure that they had a winning combination. The AW-55 Apollo prototype was designed and built to accommodate a crew of three, two pilots and one cabin crew. Passenger seating could be configured for up to 31 people. However, a slightly longer version for production had also been discussed, as well as a military version for troop transport. Construction on the Apollo progressed until its rollout in April of 1949. This sleek, fully pressurized airliner was a far cry from the utility fighters and bombers the industry had produced just a few years before. On the 10th of April, Apollo aircraft serial number VX-220 took to the air from a grass field at Baggington Airport. Its first flight lasted just half an hour, and the results were less than impressive. The first problem was that the Mamba ASM-2 engines failed to produce the 1,200 plus horsepower expected, which were indeed needed to meet the aircraft's performance requirements. The 800 horsepower that was actually recorded 
was far short of what was anticipated. Subsequent test flights also demonstrated numerous flaws in the airframe design. Improvements were constantly made until a critical flight test to Paris and back was undertaken on the 12th of March, 1951. Still, problems persisted, with the Apollo having a flawed airframe and the Mamba engines remaining underpowered. In June of 1952, all further development on the Apollo was abandoned, and the only two examples ever built were used for research work at Boscombe Down. This left the Vickers Viscount the undoubted winner, and it was this type that also went on to become one of Britain's all-time airliner export earners, with 445 built. The redoubtable Rolls-Royce Dart turboprop engine was even more successful, with over 7,000 engines delivered to numerous customers up until 1987, 41 years after its first test. For a while, the Armstrong Sidley Mamba had no such success, but then again it certainly wasn't a complete failure either. Rather, with improvement, it morphed into several different life forms, each one displaying considerable and unexpected ingenuity. At about the same time that the Apollo was under construction, the Royal Navy and Ferry Aviation were developing a truly remarkable anti-submarine aircraft. The Ferry Gannet shared the same problems as many carrier-borne aircraft. It had the performance needs of two power plants, but this usually meant the high risk of possibly having to land with one engine not functioning. This type of asymmetric approach is highly dangerous for the aircrew. A second consideration for Ferry's designers was the significant economy that might be achieved on long missions if one of two engines could actually be turned off and yet still leave the plane with the same balance as a single-engined aircraft. Armstrong Siddeley thought that they might have the answer. The very narrow diameter of the Mamba turboprop might now prove most useful if two could be assembled side by side, driving two contra-rotating propellers, both able to be turned on and off independent of the other. The double Mamba, as it became known, was a major success providing Gannett pilots with two jet power plants in an aircraft that had great range and at the same time was safe to land even with one engine down. Because of its Mamba engines, the Gannett became a much trusted maritime aircraft which went on to serve in a number of other countries. With nearly 350 of all types made, it wasn't so far off the numbers of Viscounts delivered, although the Vickers plane had four turboprops as opposed to the Gannets too. Still, the versatile Mamba had much more to offer. By removing the gearbox and the propeller drive, Armstrong Sidley were able to present a conventional turbojet. With a few more deletions and economies, this evolved into a so-called expendable power plant, and it transpired that there actually was quite a market for a short-life jet engine. It was named the Adder. Post-war Western governments knew that they might have to deal with Soviet forces that would include jet aircraft. Target practice on anything flying less than in the high 500 miles an hour range would be useless. Equally important, a target would have to be able to fly up to a height of 50,000 feet and get there quickly, since most drones only have a limited flight time. In 1948, the Australian Government Aircraft Factory entered into a contract to develop an unmanned radio-controlled flying target. It was given the name Jindavik, Aboriginal for the Hunted One. Made in Australia, many were shipped to Britain in parts, where, with their experience with the Mamba engine, Ferry Aviation assembled each unit that was powered by the Mamba's descendant, the Adder. More than 500 Jindaviks were built and employed by Australia, Britain, the United States, and Sweden. Over time, Armstrong Siddeley merged with their rivals, Rolls-Royce, although not before it had redeveloped the Adder into a stronger and more reliable turbojet. The end result was also much more powerful. It was named the Viper, and Vipers were produced in the hundreds, powering the Jet Provost, Strikemasters, Hawker Siddeley 125, and many more. 
What started out as a misfire with the Mamba engines on the Apollo developed over time into a successful line of engines with the Double Mamba, Adder, and Vipers that would power numerous aircraft for years to come. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.